that deep. No one would even take it to me. All right, what I do want to do real quick is Alan and Toby. I want to give you a chance if you guys like have any gravy. Because I kind of asked if you guys would be here. We always go late. I always do this. But if you have anything that you want to kind of cover or throw out there, let people simmer on, chew on, anything like that, uh, I want to give you guys a little bit of space to ladle some gravy. And then what I'm going to do is put the pull together all the different um if there's any more tips and then make sure i read them off so uh I'm, we're gonna read the tips in a second so don't think i forgot about you guys again links in the description i'll check i'll catch up with you guys if you support and uh yeah alan toby whoever if you guys don't take away if not no pressure dude i'll keep i'll keep rocking but i just figured i'd give you a spot yeah no worries man <clears throat> so toby do you want to do lego now yeah sure i'd love to go over the convolutional neural network real quick Awesome. Let's send it. Cool. You go uh, over that, and then I'll hit covariance on the back end, and we'll call it a day. This sounds good. So yeah, uh, let me just pull my notes up here. Uh, so before I get into LIGO, um, I'll just real quick touch on the fact that in 2017, I uh, they did a uh, presentation or they did a uh, experiment doing using resonance chambers, electromagnetic resonance and they uh, measured fluctuations in those but before they actually looked at the data before they actually looked at the measurements they i uh, they had they used a error weighted least squares regression model and the error weighting specifically was used to throw out uh daily fluctuations in seasonal variance which i uh, is is like basically exactly what dayton miller had measured he measured uh daily like well Yuri Galov would call it the uh, space effect, and then the uh, there's also the effect of the equinoxes correlating with the the motion of the sun. So they specifically threw that out in the 2017 experiment that they did to quote unquote verify the constancy of C, verify the constancy of the speed of light. So with LIGO, what they do is they actually have a uh, they, act, they don't actually even like look at real data, right? Everything that they look at comes through the lens of a convolutional neural network. I, I'm actually having some problems pulling my notes up. One second. And if you want to, I can uh, share your screen. If, you, if you're trying to show something or if you're just trying to look at notes, then you're good. No, yeah, there's nothing. I, you're good, you're good. Yeah. But yeah, in any case, I. so yeah, they just go through like, so there's essentially they've been building upon this concept of matched filtering. And what that implies is essentially that they're filtering for the data that they're looking for before they even look at any of the, like before they draw any conclusions about the data, it's actually called noise. Like that's actually, I uh, like the, sorry, I'm having like a weird computer problem here. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it's actually called noise. And then they take the noise and they run it through what's called a convolutional neural network. And the first layer of the convolutional neural network is extra extrapolate the data out across multiple dimensions and add spatiality to it across multiple dimensions. And then they go through and they do they look for uh, certain shapes within those dimension within that dimensionality. And then they do correlations upon all those shapes. And then they do combinations of those shapes to do to create new correlations. Then they go through and they remove spatiality from all that data. And then they do normalization. Uh, and so basically, that's just throwing out a bunch of data. And then after they've done normalization, they do another whole layer of classification. Uh, and then after they've done classif classification, they run through an another, uh, what's that last layer called? I can't remember. Unfortunately, I was having issues with my notes. Is it another layer of the network? The, co the convolutional? Yeah, it's just network? another layer of their, of their neural network. Yeah. Uh, and so the whole, all that is to say, whatever they're measuring, you know, could there be something they're measuring that relates to the sky? It's entirely possible, but whatever they're measuring comes through uh, a computational statistical framework. And so they're not actually measuring anything direct. And so you have to really take everything that comes from LIGO with a grain of salt because um, you have to understand it's all viewed through a purely theoretical, hypothetical uh, relativistic lens. And so if anything falls outside of that, it's just like when they go to test for the Elias effect and they use an electromagnetic break to make sure it doesn't actually go outside of what it's supposed to do. That's what they're doing here, but in a way more complicated fashion. They're just making sure that they don't get readings that go outside of what they're supposed to see, such as daily fluctuations 
and seasonal variants. Uh, so yeah, like, you know, I wish that we could actually get the real data from LIGO and not just the, the, you know, what they get that comes out of a convolutional neural network. And then not only that, but just one last note on LIGO, <clears throat> the dudes, when they first measured it, like the next day or whatever, or however long afterwards, it was revealed that the first data was like the first gravitational wave that they measured was actually, um, it was actually sample data. And they were just like testing the engineers to see if they were going to find it or something, I guess. Uh, that, that came out. Like, first they revealed it. First it was revealed to the world. We found gravitational waves. And then afterwards, they're like, oh, actually, we didn't actually find them. And I'm almost wondering, like, did they just get caught? The fact that they planted data to make this happen? To the point that the second time when they measured the gravitational waves, you can go find YouTube videos of the guys that worked at LIGO. And they didn't trust the grav. They didn't trust the uh, the readings at all. They like went around hunting for thumb drives and like checking their network for bugs and stuff because they're like, did someone plant data again? Essentially, is what I could gather. The guy literally didn't believe their like big groundbreaking, uh, massive you know gravitational wave experiment. The thing he like devoted his life to. He didn't even believe it for months because of like the psychological games they've been playing with those guys there. So like, I uh, yeah, like I definitely I. Uh, would take everything from LIGO with a big grain of salt. Am I allowed to respond to any of that? Um, sure, man. I did, I did just visit LIGO this last weekend, and I talked to the guy who was in the control room that night that they detected those first gravitational waves. What did he tell you about it? Um, yeah, I was asking him all kinds of questions because he got, like, you know, I mean, he PhD was from MIT. The, sorry, was that, was that the 2015 one, the first one? Yeah. All right, back. So whichever All one right. he said it was like at like three thirty in the morning or something. So I, but he said nice. it was like okay, that perfect. first one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and, and so they talked about how like in that first detection that they spent like months and months trying to rule out every possible externality of like anything else that it could possibly be because they wanted to be extremely confident that what they were looking at is gravitational waves. And the questions that I have with like. Like, I get that they go through a lot of, like, signal-to-noise, um, like, enhancements or whatever, and there's a lot of stuff that, like, that the data processing goes through. But, like, I, I would just wonder about, like, why is it that, like... Well, okay, there's two things. Like, first of all, with the normal, like, black hole-black hole collision that they that they're detecting... Um, there's nothing that you can really look, look at the sky to verify that, but they have detected a neutron neutron star collision, um, which is like a different waveform. And that produces as well as producing gravitational waves that also produces like a gamma ray burst. And so you can observe that. And so while I was there, they mentioned that whenever they've detected that neutron neutron star collision, they said, okay, like they reached out to optical telescopes and said, hey, we detected a gravitational wave from two neutron stars in this general vicinity of the sky. Can you check to see if there was a gamma ray burst in, in that signal and that in that area of the sky? And then there, it was confirmed that there was a gamma ray burst exactly where they had thought that there should be based on the gravitational wave data. So there is some kind of like, there's some there there. You know what I mean? It's possible. I definitely think it's possible, uh, but like I said, I just take uh, all of their claims through a grain of salt, and um, you know, uh, yeah, I think they're probably missing out on a lot of really interesting data about the ether wind. So was that so? The twenty fifteen guy yeah, told you that they collaborated that gamma ray thing, or was that after? Or was that a different one? That was a different one. So that that was uh, the very first one that they detected was a gra uh, black hole black hole merger. But right, right. the one that has the gamma ray, that's from the neutron neutron yeah. star collision. Yeah, dude, you can't trust any dude. So like Toby was saying, dude, they did a blind injection of data like as a drill to see if the scientists could detect if it was fake or not. And right before they went public with the paper, they literally pulled the plug and told everyone it was a ruse just to see if they could do it. They don't actually have a gravitational wave to compare to. It's entirely a construct you know, derived out of noise to fit a model that they of what they think it should look like based upon what they think it should look like. So it's it's really it's really not what you uh what you think it is. And like they're telling you, oh yeah, we 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 called this other lab and they looked in the sky and they also saw a gamma burst, dude. 
like that's a cool story to reify it but did that guy also tell you that during that first observation that they made for that so-called gravitational wave of the two black holes derived from the Kerr metric um <clears throat> did he tell you that that detection was made while the device was under maintenance and the the uh the software that they used to like prevent false posit false positives and stuff was down like it wasn't even operational and it was in maintenance mode and hadn't even been fully booted up and they and they just went ahead and ran with that so like that's their that's their that's their big reveal for their gravitational wave. Um, and so, what is your source for this information about that first detection being so weird and sus? Yeah, from LIGO themselves, and the source that you can read from that is from uh, Stephen Crothers. He sources it and then has the LIGO stuff on it as well, like the the sources. Okay, would you be it. able to send me that? Absolutely, sending it now. Cool. Yeah, in and the, then to get the it, and then to. Yeah. Yep, I got you. And then to get into the mathematical derivation of the so-called gravitational wave, uh, Crothers also points out that under transformation, it's not even covariant. So, like, they try and relate it to it being it propagating at the speed of C, you know, to match yep. Einstein's theory. Yep. But when they but they have it, they derive it in a preferred coordinate system so that it gives the appearance that it matches. He breaks down the transformations, and that's not it's not even. Uh, it's not it's not invariant under transformation so it's not even covariant it's not even canonized in the mythology and the mathematics so it's like these people have a model that they you know want to get out of this and they have you know the means and technology to scramble noise and dissect it through convolutional neural networks to get the to get the quote unquote image of what they need of two black holes merging you know a little coalescing in the sky but do you, do you not think that it's weird that like these that that detection was the same waveform at both of the different LIGO facilities in Louisiana and Washington. No, because they can, they can inject that. Like I was just saying, they would have no way of knowing to verify if it's real or not anyway. And they don't, and they don't like they literally don't know. They can inject it through, for, uh, like as a drill. That was the first thing they did. And you could read about that on LIGO's own website. Actually, I'll, I'll link you the, uh, the source to that one second. Where are you putting like, these links, by the way? Oh, they're in they're in the uh, they're in the side chat. One second, I'll get you that PDF too. Okay, yeah. Grayson, you gotta admit that it's pretty crazy how how much the flat earthers look into everything, huh? <laughs> 